the Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. In these programs, you may have noticed that we of the Equitable Life Assurance Society usually speak of the men and women who own equitable life insurance policies as members of the society. In calling them members, we're being strictly accurate. For when you purchase life insurance from the Equitable Society, you really are joining a society. Your policy is your certificate of membership in a great cooperative enterprise which is run solely for the benefit of its members. Get to know the Equitable Society representative in your community. He is the never-failing source of all those benefits which accrue to members and those who are to become members of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight's FBI file, The Pan-American Patriot. During the past few months following VJ Day, many pages of your FBI's secret war diary have been made public. Pages which tell the thrilling story of your FBI's victory over Axis agents here at home. But until now, the seal on a certain other chapter has remained unbroken. A chapter which might be entitled Foreign Operations. Tonight, we shall break that seal and bring you for the first time a story of your FBI's foreign operations in South America. Among the most vital points along America's line of communications and supply to the Mediterranean and Middle East during the war were certain ports and relay bases in South America. But in the fall of 1942, Information on operations at these points was still getting through to Berlin by secret Nazi radio transmitters. Here was a job for your FBI. And this particular story opens on a certain night in the capital city of a certain South American country, friendly to America, but not yet at war with the Axis. Easily the most striking couple on the dance floor of the famous Casa Managua nightclub this night is the very attractive blonde young girl. American, or perhaps English, and the tall, handsome young South American, who, at this moment, suddenly presses the girl closer to him. Raphael, if you don't mind, you're crushing my corsage. Forget your corsage, my dear Vera. I'll get you a dozen more, a thousand more. <laughs> then you can enter me as a float in the flower carnival. Darling, can't you be serious for just one moment? Oh, no, I'm allergic to it. Vera, for the millionth time... Will you marry me? No. Well, why not? Because, for one thing, you're a slave to that old shipping company. Well, then I'll give it up and be your slave, your humble, groveling, devoted slave for the rest of my life. Uh-uh. I wouldn't have that on a bed. Uh. Raphael, I'm going out on the terrace for some fresh air. And if you will put your hands in your pockets now and leave them there, you may come with me. What a girl. <laughs> what a girl. Go ahead, darling. Thanks. May I have a cigarette? Sorry. My hands are in prison in my pockets. Oh. I'll grant them a temporary parole. Good. Here you are. Thank you. And a light. Mm. The moon is lovely. Yes. Do you know the lines... Yon rising moon that looks for us again. How oft hereafter will she wax 
must in wane. How oft hereafter, rising, look for us through this same garden, and for one in vain. But it's beautiful. You see, I do have my serious moments. Oh, darling. Raphael, look behind you. Das hast du gut gemacht, Müller. Jetzt tragen wir weg. Jawohl, Herr Bonner. In a house in another part of the city, Special Agents James Phillips and Stanley Douglas of the FBI, working by permission of and in cooperation with the Director of National Police, have established a shortwave radio receiver for the purpose of locating and monitoring the illegal Nazi transmitter known to be operating somewhere in or near the city. Three days ago, they had just picked up the transmitter for the first time when suddenly it stopped sending. It is now two nights after the incident at the Casa Managua. Douglas at the receiver keeps a listening vigil with the headphones. Still dead air, Sam? Yeah, not a peep. Well, maybe they've been changing the location of the transmitter. It shouldn't take them three days to do that, Jim. Maybe they've also been waiting to get hold of important information. Like what? That I wouldn't know. But when they do start sending again, we'll know what they're talking about. What do you mean? The police arrested a Nazi agent this afternoon, and when he was confronted with the ironclad case built up against him, he told all he knew. Oh. Here's the whole breakdown on the code the Germans are using. Hey, what a break. Yes. Want me to relieve you a while there? Yeah, I'd like to stretch my legs and get some coffee, if you don't mind. Right. Is the antenna angled in the direction we picked them up before? Yeah, it is now. I've been all around with it, but I have... Hey, wait. Wait a minute. Got something? Yeah, I, I think so. It's, uh, it's awfully faint, and it may not be them. See if you can bring it up with the antenna. That does it all right. Jim, it's them. That's their call signal. Good. You spell out the message. I'll take it down and decode it. Right. Come in, Senor Phillips. Thank you, sir. Have you picked up something? Yes, and thanks to your men getting that code, we know what that something is. Yes. German agents have just transmitted to Berlin some very important information on American ship movements and cargo going out of this port. Shipping information? Yes, sir. I see. And there could be a connection between the two. I beg your pardon, sir? Senor Phillips, not an hour ago we received a report here at headquarters that Rafael Corinto is missing. He's missing two days now. Rafael Corinto? Si, si. He's connected with one of the Allied shipping firms here. Oh. And he would have access to information on all shipping that enters or leaves this port. Then I should say there could be a connection. What is your suggestion? I have an idea that if we find that German transmitter, we'll find Corinto, too. But finding the transmitter, that is the problem. A problem that my partner may have solved by now. How? Once a transmitter has been picked up, its position can be determined with mathematical precision. I'll get back over to our house, and as soon as my partner has the answer, I'll contact you, sir. The Corindo come to see you, brother. Now, help him a little nach. Uh-huh. Come. No. Oh, yeah, genug, genug, Miller. You are sufficiently awake, Herr Corinto. Who? Who are you? One of your hosts. Where am I? That is not important. What? What happened to me? It's quite obvious, isn't it? You are Germans. That's right. Nazis. Correct again, sir. And in the name of our Führer, I thank you for having rendered us a great service. What do you mean? You have given us much valuable shipping information, which is now in the hands of our intelligence in Berlin. No, I don't believe you. Oh, you didn't give it willingly. After two days, we are to resort to giving you the drug scopolamine. Two days? I have been here two days? Yes. Well, what about the girl who was with me? What have you done with her? Well, answer me, where is Vera? Oh, darling. Darling. Are you all right? 
Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Thank heavens. What shall we do with him, Fallon? Mm, just let him stay here. Royla. Vera. He called you Fräulein. That's right. But why should These he go... These men work for me. Vera! You see, Raphael, as I said on the terrace the other night, I do have my serious side, too. Mr. Solano, I think we have some good news for you. You found the German radio transmitter? My partner here, Mr. Douglas, has determined its location on this map. Good. Where is it? Show him, Stan. Right. I've checked my own calculations three times, Mr. Solano, and I'm pretty sure this is right. Uh, show me, please. I'd swear the transmitter is located within this tiny circle I've drawn at this point. Uh, in the mountains. Uh, about ten miles airline, west of the city. Mr. Solano, are there any houses or vacation resort buildings around there? Let me think. Uh, there is one small lodge hidden in a strip of woods and overlooking the valley below. That must be the place, Jim. What do you wish me to do now, Senor Phillips? You have authority to arrest anyone operating an unlicensed radio transmitter. That is right. And Rafael Corinto is missing. And if he was abducted, whether by German agents or anyone else... That is a crime. Yes, and time is precious. They may decide to move the transmitter again any moment. And our work would have to be done over again. Then we shall leave immediately. Pablo, diga al Capitano Otero que tenga pronto sus hombres. Tenemos que irnos en cinco minutos. Brenner. Yes, Father. Is the transmitter dismantled and ready to go? In a few more minutes. Good. I don't understand why we are moving. We've only just established ourselves here. We can't take the chance of having our position located. But moving so often is a risk to... Brenner, let me handle things, please. Very well. What shall we do with your friend? I'm seeing him now. Let me know when the transmitter's in the car. All right. How are you, Raphael? What do you want? Oh, I've just come in to say goodbye. Don't talk to me. Darling. No parting, please. Leave me alone. That sounds like the voice of frustrated love. It's the voice of something that you wouldn't understand. Really? You've made me betray the friends of my country. A Nazi would not understand that. Oh, oh Raphael, you are so delightful. I really hate to leave you. Please go away. Not until I've made our parting final. Sorry, Raphael. <coughs> the car's ready for him. Oh, thank you, Brenner. Oh, it's a lovely day for a drive. Tonight's portrayal of your FBI's efforts to protect American security will reopen in just a moment. Meanwhile, let's consider two qualities which have been fundamental to American security since our nation's birth, thrift and self-reliance. This week at the Equitable Society, we were talking of a young Virginian who landed his first important job when he was only 16 years old. In the year 1748, he became a surveyor in the backwoods of his native state. Within one year, he'd saved enough money to purchase 456 acres of land. The name of this thrifty, self-reliant young man was, of course, George Washington. And from his day to ours, good Americans have followed his example. And their thrift and self-reliance have helped America grow from 13 small colonies to the most powerful and productive country on the face of the earth. For the last 86 years of that period of national growth, Millions of Americans who agree with Washington that thrift and self-reliance are good qualities have joined the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Yes, every policy we write in the Equitable Society is someone's declaration of independence. By taking out that policy of his own free will, its owner declares that he believes in personal independence, believes in taking care of himself. He declares that he doesn't want to be coddled or regimented. 
that he's not interested in paternalism or handouts. And here and now, let me say that we of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States consider ourselves privileged to be associated with men and women who feel and act that way. And we're proud that this week and every week for 86 years, the Equitable Society has been building security for you, your home, and your country. And now back to the FBI file, The Pan American Patriot. Agents of an enemy country differ from the average professional criminal in their objectives only. Both employ the same general methods in achieving them. Treachery, cunning, deception, surprise, violence. And both leave traces of their crimes. Traces which eventually make a trail leading the forces of justice to them. It was barely ten minutes after the girl Vera, the leader of the ring of German agents in the South American capital, shot Raphael Carinto, that FBI agents Phillips and Douglas, accompanied by the director of national police and a force of men, arrived at the mountain lodge. They have now just entered the deserted quarters. Well, they've cleared out of here all right, Mr. Solano. See? Si. By all the signs, Senor Phillips, they seem to have left in a hurry. Ordinarily, that would indicate they'd received a tip that we were coming. Well, there was no time for that. I know. I guess they simply just decided to move again, and unfortunately for us, they timed it right. But Corinto, what did they do with him, Mr. Yes, Dan. In here. Look. Oh. That answers what they did with Corinto, Mr. Solano. It was the work of an automatic, Jim. I just picked up this empty cartridge. Small caliber, too. Ah, Looks like it might have been fired by one of those little pearl handle jobs that women use. Say, look in this ashtray. Cigarette stuff. Lipstick on it. Yes. It's not an American blend of tobacco, anyway. English? No. That'd be straight Virginia tobacco. And this one has a... Turkish or Egyptian odor. Uh, we can have it analyzed in the laboratory, senor. Yes, and this cartridge, too. And the bullet in Corinto's body. Well, I guess there's nothing more to be done here. Then I shall have the men take care of Corinto's body and we'll return to headquarters at once. If the police should have determined the other location of our transmitter, they will find Corinto's body. What of it? His body won't tell them where we're going. But that is murder, Fräulein, and the police may start a general roundup of all suspected German agents. Is the risk of our job too great for you, Brenner? It is not that. Perhaps you would like me to send you back to Germany to fight. What are your plans, Fräulein? Your orders are to set up the transmitter... When we've arrived at the new location. Yes. I'm returning to the city to the Hotel Esplanade tonight. You are to report to me there at noon tomorrow. Very well. Corinto has helped us to achieve one objective. Now we must move on to another. I must make a new contact, Brenner. <laughs> I wonder what he'll be like. Stan? Oh, hello, Jim. Get the ballistic report from Solano's office yet? Yep, I just phoned it over. 25 caliber automatic. American make. And I think I've got a lead on the girl who fired it. What? I've been tracking down the source of that Egyptian cigarette. Oh? Only one tobacco shop in the city imports them. And he has only two customers for them. Well? One customer is an attache of the British Embassy who spent some years in Cairo. Well, that eliminates that one. And the other is an attractive young girl. A Miss Vera Morgan. Hmm. Who's she? Well, the tobacconist thinks she might be American or English. But I'm going to find out if she's German. How? She lives at the Hotel Esplanade. Oh. Do you think I'll look all right in swimming trunks, Stan? <laughs> what do you mean? According to the assistant manager of the hotel, Miss Morgan usually takes a dip in the hotel pool every afternoon about four o'clock. And it's a quarter of four now. So long, Stan. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm sorry. I'm not. I, I planned it this way. I, I, I beg your pardon. I misjudged your last two dives, and you didn't bump into me. Oh, so you deliberately plotted this collision. Do you mind? No. Well, shall we sit down here and talk, or isn't that being done in 20 feet of water? I'll race you to the side. Right. <laughs> Oh, no good. It was a tie. Well, may I, I help you up? No, thanks. I can make it. <laughs> oh. Now, uh, what time are we having dinner this evening? Oh, did you say your name was Swift? No, it's Jim Phillips. Who are you? <laughs> Don't tell me you haven't already found out. I'd rather hear you say it. All right. Born in Connecticut. My parents moved to Paris when I was four, to South America when I was 18... My mother is dead. My father is in France and can't get home. Now, how does your biography go? Born in Cleveland. Went to engineering school. Came the war, and here I am working in South America and looking into a pair of the most exciting blue-gray eyes in the world. And how am I doing? An engineer. How fascinating. If I'd been a man, that's what I would have been. Personally, I'm glad you turned out this way. Working in the mines down there? No, doing a little stuff for Uncle Sam. They call it hush-hush, you know. Oh, sorry. Well, you haven't answered my question. What time are we having dinner? Why don't you call for me about 8.30? It's a date. Well, I guess I just wasn't cut out for the job of tackling him out of Harry, Stan. <laughs> Must be pleasant work, though. It's two weeks I've been working on that girl now. Lunching, and swimming, and dining, and dancing, and driving. I haven't tripped her up once. How about you? What do you mean? You told her you were an engineer down here on a hush-hush job. What's she done about that? Questioning you, I mean. She's been pretty neat about it. Nothing obvious enough to incriminate herself yet. Uh, maybe I've got some incriminating information. What? Solano's office called me just before you walked in. Oh? Uh, they found out where Corinto was the night he was abducted. Yeah? Where? Casa Managua. And he went there with Vera Morgan. Hmm. And that was the last time Corinto was seen alive. Hmm. Maybe we ought to go over there tonight and have a little look around and see what's what. Or, uh, if you've got a date. Tentatively, but... Oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, hello, Vera. Yes. Why, why, yes, of course. Oh, I'd love to, you know that. Where? Uh, where? Yes. Yes, I'll join you there. Bye. Well, I've got a date now, Stan. Yeah. She's giving a little dinner party for me tonight at the Casa Managua. <laughs> You dance beautifully, Jim. Thanks for letting me hold you in my arms again, darling. I wanted to get away from those stuffy people. I know. Jim. Yes, dear? I'd like to go out on the terrace and get some fresh air. Wonderful idea. Let's go. After you, dear. Thank you. May I have a cigarette? Here you are. Thanks. His life. Oh, the moon is lovely. Mm. Do you know the lines, yon rising moon that looks for us again? How oft hereafter will she wax and wane? How oft hereafter rising look for us through this same garden and for one in vain? You see, Jim, I do have my serious side. And I have my serious eye, too, darling. I... Jim, look. Look out. Don't worry. We already have. What? Get up that gun. Stay where you are. What's going on? on? Look, 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 look. We're all under arrest. I'm afraid that means you, too, Vera. Well, what do you mean? We searched your suite, senorita, after you left to come here tonight. We have found the pistol with which you killed Rafael Corinto. You will come with us now. Jim, what is all this? Well, Vera, it's like I said a moment ago. I, too, have my serious side. As a special agent of the FBI... 
Vera Morgan and her Nazi accomplice were tried and convicted by the local authorities for the murder of Rafael Corinto. You have just heard for the first time a page from your FBI's secret war diary of foreign operations. While your FBI humanly takes pride in the success of its work against enemy agents abroad as well as at home during the war, this story was presented solely for the purpose of reporting to those whom the FBI serves. You, the citizens of America, of reporting that your FBI has duly carried out its single obligation to protect the lives and property and welfare of your country wherever flies the American flag. Before you hear about next week's thrilling case from the files of your FBI, the Equitable Life Assurance Society wants to tell you about a citizen of whom your community can well be proud. Just as you look to the FBI for national security, you look to the Equitable Society representative in your community for the financial security of life insurance. He is a man ready to serve you in the same spirit in which throughout 86 years, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States has always served its members. Like your FBI, your Equitable Society representative is dedicated to the security of you, your home, and your country. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Castaway Killer. The incident used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are taken from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was under the direction of Frederick Steiner, the author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. Now, this is Carl Frank speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time for This is Your FBI. Friday nights, there are great programs on ABC. Maybe Washington never told a fib, but listen now for Frank Morgan on The Alan Young Show. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.